Everybody wants to get back to some sort of normalcy, and we know that normalcy hasn't been normal for months, but it's getting together, it's experiencing maybe rural life. If you live in a big city, I mean, today I'm in Lincoln, I'm looking out the window and I can see the university campus. And I know there's folks that would love to get out in the countryside, maybe sit underneath a big tree, enjoy a tall glass of lemonade or whatever beverages of their choice. So what a great opportunity for us to bring rural with city and rural to rural in many ways. And as you can see on, on the screen, we have got the guys joining me, Josh Kilmer Purcell and Brent Ridge. I'm so excited to see you guys via Zoom versus us being on the phone. It's, it's a new world, the new Zoom world. And it wouldn't, it, be, wouldn't be somewhere in the country if I wasn't multitasking. So we just I'm, harvested the fava I'm beans. shelling fava beans and anybody We're, who knows fava beans know how much, how, knows this, how much work it is. It's the second shelling process. So first <laughs> you have to take them out of the shell, then you have to blanch them, then you have to take the outer shell out. So it's, so we're going to zoom and shell. <laughs> zoom and shell. And I'll sit here in the Lincoln office and, and, and watch you guys do all that work. <laughs> I am, I'm so excited. You know, we've had a lot of conversations here in Nebraska amongst some producers of hosting what you guys have done with your long tables mm -hmm. and having neighborhood get togethers and bringing people out to the country and having kind of a giant potluck. But in the world that we're in right now, it's not foreseeable. So is that kind of how you guys came up with this idea for the, the largest outdoor restaurant? That's right. You're exactly right. You know, we have, uh, you've been to our farm, you've been to Sharon Springs, a very rural town. Um, and, um, you know, we've had big dinners, long tables on our farm before. And, but now you can't do those in the age of social distancing. You can't have people sitting shoulder to shoulder. And um, also some of the small restaurants in our town um, were having, you know, a very bad season you know they yeah, close for many months it's really tough on small restaurants because even as the uh, restrictions have relaxed you know they have reduced capacity they may be in the small spaces to begin with so in a restaurant with 10 tables if you can only have two of them filled how do you make your night you know and so we thought oh well how can we kind of solve two problems at one time how can we have a take a resource that we have which is our farm and then gift that to the restaurants in our community who don't have outdoor seating um, so that we, they can have, utilize the farm to create the world's largest restaurant. Well, uh, and then at the same time, offering everyone who's been cooped up at home for months and months and may not feel safe going to a restaurant even if there is reduced capacity, they don't wanna be inside. They, they wanna you know, be completely carefree and 100% social distance. And you guys have such a beautiful view anyways there. Yeah. to be able to to see what happens. Well, you know what, Susan, every farm has a beautiful view. Yep. There's no farm that doesn't have a beautiful view somewhere on the farm. And you know, when we um, posted about these on our social media, all of our seedings sold out immediately. So we know that there's a huge demand. You know, people are craving um, to get out of their homes, to you know, experience nature if they are living in a city. And it is such a great opportunity for farms and restaurants to work together on a really personal and a really personal way. Um, and make, we've, and all, make, we've all heard farm to table. This is table to farm. So true. we're actually that's true. bringing that's the good. tables to the farm. That's very good. Yeah, you know, because so often, uh, you know, as you know, a lot of your farmers will load up their produce on a big truck and then they'll go somewhere and they don't really know where it goes. And now they can really work with some farmers in their area uh, some restaurants in their area to put on these dinners. And the way we did it was that we said, okay, every restaurant who wants to participate um, gets to adopt our farm for an evening. And we set up tables all throughout the property. So they're really socially distanced, like acres in between each one. Um, and then we sent out the menus to the people who reserved a spot. Um, from the restaurants, they chose the you know the dinners that they wanted, and then the restaurants delivered the meals to our farm, completely socially distanced. Um, and then each uh, meal was put in a special tiffin, so that even the waiters or the, the our staff who was serving the meal didn't even have to come in six feet contact to yeah. the people who were dining. So we we didn't have to set up big kitchens on the property. We didn't have to set up a big health code or anything. It was literally the restaurants cooking the food in the kitchen, putting them in these tiffins, which are sort of a stacked lunchbox thing. You can get them on Amazon, bringing them to the farm. And then we walked them to the tables and people served themselves at their own table. So and it was super easy, super inexpensive. Elegant, oh, yeah. super inexpensive to do. 
And, um, you know, what helped the restaurants out was it wasn't just um, them get serving something off of their menu um, and charging that price. Because of the ambiance of being outside and being on a farm, um, they were able to charge a premium um, for these dinner events. So they're able to recoup some of the losses that they've experienced during their shutdowns. And what was, and what was also really lovely was, as soon as we posted about it, a local band who generally plays in restaurants and bars um, and hasn't been able to in a long time, they saw our post and they said, hey, we'll come play on your farm uh, for free. And so they sat there and played for all, you know, the diners, you, you could hear it on the other side of the 60 acres, you could hear them playing. And they, and they, got, they made more in tips than they would have made on a regular night in a restaurant. Yeah, so it was really lovely um, experience. And the reason we wanted to tell people about it was because it's something that any rural community can do. If, if you've got a farm in a restaurant, you can do this. I was gonna ask you guys, how does somebody go about getting started? to be able to have that on their farm? Well, the, the first thing you have to do is reach out to the restaurants and see if they want to participate. Um, and then, you know, for us, we already had um, a website where we could post about the links and, you know, people could reserve. Um, but you could do it directly over the phone. You know, we, we're only doing five tables um, a night. Um, so it's not that overwhelming. And people, um, if they don't have a website, could just call the restaurant and make the reservation. And the restaurant could, you know, cook everything just like that. Um, and then just give people the directions to the farm. And also a local um, events company. Of course, their business is way, way down, you know, if there's not as many events. So they had tables and chairs that they weren't using. Um, and just to, they also, in order to support their local restaurants, our local restaurants, they said, hey, you know, we're going to drop off chairs. We're not going to set them up. You know, we, we, we can't do all that. We'll drop them off. We don't need them. You guys set them up and we'll, we'll pick them up in a month. Uh, so again, it was everybody sort of working together. Life hands you lemons, you make lemonades. Life hands you a pandemic, you create the world's largest restaurant. Well, it is just amazing. And I, I was not surprised when I saw the, the initial reaction to it and how fast people are wanting to be a part of that. And the fact that you guys sold out so fast, but what I'm really intrigued is we're seeing it spread across the country. And you've got so many folks saying, I wanna do this at my operation. I wanna help out our local restaurant. And what a great way to educate in a full circle when you're bringing somebody out to your farm. Oh, absolutely. And we just really wanna encourage as many communities to try this, even if it's just a one night event, you know, just give it a try. And actually on our Facebook page, and we'll send you the link to this, we gave kind of a step-by-step -step instruction and pictures of how we organize the entire thing. So if people are interested, um, they can, you know, look on there and get um, some hints on how to organize it themselves. And we have had people from Texas who are trying to put one on, um, uh, people from Minnesota who are trying to put a series of them on. Um, and, you know, you don't have to follow exactly the way we did it. You can make it your own for your own community. But it's just that idea that, you can put your creative thinking caps on. You can use the natural resources that you have in a farming community and help some of the other businesses in your community who may not have um, the ability to, to open up their businesses right now. So as you guys look back at what you've done so far, if you could change something, what would it be? About this particular um, project? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say um, think ahead and plan for more tables. Mm -hmm. That would be it because the, 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 the tables filled up so quickly um, and I think if we if it wasn't so spurred the moment we put together the whole idea in about two weeks um, you know we would have planned a little bit more and actually we're thinking about coming back in the fall and doing another series if we're still under the same kind of pandemic um, circumstances here um, and maybe making them a little bit bigger. I would think the the emotional side of it not only for the businesses that you're helping out, but for the folks that are attending. I mean, they've been socially distanced. They haven't had a chance to have, you know, a good cooked meal that they didn't have to do in their own kitchen. Mm -hmm. And what a great opportunity to go out there, eat some good food and, and be able just to relax a little bit. And the relaxing is the key part because several of, several of the guests um, had, were immunocompromised in some way. So even if they were able to go to a restaurant in their area, they just didn't feel comfortable yet. Um, so being out there, we had tables that were, you know, three foot, 
football fields away from the next table. So, you know, you could truly, truly be there, relax, and enjoy, you know, top quality meals and you know, drinks really safe in the yeah. sunset. So, Ander, does he get to, does she get to be a part of all of this? Does she kind of wander around greeting guests? Under is our farm dog, and what she likes to do most is walk around after the dinner and see what scraps were left behind. <laughs> she has, the food has been so delicious, she hasn't been very lucky, I must yeah. say. Our team has realized it's a lot easier just to dump the leftovers in the grass for Under than carry it back to, uh, all the way to the farm. You, you brought up food, and before we wrap up, I kind of want to tell us what, what are some things people are eating when they come? Oh, oh that's the food amazing. has been that's, amazing. Because again, we had every week was a different restaurant. And we asked each restaurant to um, really be creative and show off their skills. Um, and so the restaurants have just come up with some amazing meals. We, the, um, the first eating was um, crab cake um, and then uh, for the first course and then salmon with a farro salad for the second course. Um, I forget what they did for dessert. It was amazing. It was like a coulis, wasn't it? It was amazing. And then um, we've had an Italian night. This week is going to be um, an Indian night from a local Indian restaurant. Um, so people have just really like everybody has just stepped up and, and risen to the occasion because everyone wants to put their best foot forward. And I see too that you guys are giving back as well. I mean, you have a set rate of what it's going to cost to come have the meal, but you're talking tips, asking them to, to make a donation. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, we're not, we're not making money off of this. That land is there, whether or not, you know, we, we use it. And, uh, so the ticket price goes to the restaurant um, and then all the tips as well everything goes right to the restaurant yeah we're staff our employees from our company are staffing the event um, and so all of the tips go directly back to the restaurant our employees are doing it because they want to help our community again it just shows why everybody is such good neighbors around Sharon Springs and beyond and I think this is such a great opportunity to be able to spread so again go to your web or your Facebook page they can find out all the information that's right, and we'll send you the link too, and maybe you can post it uh, as well. You bet. Well, thank you so much. By the way, I would like the table by the willow tree, please. Oh, no. that's, there is that's right a there. beautiful table. <laughs> that's the or, one. Or I'll take a table in the barn with the goats. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Oh, that, that is one of the best things at the very end of the evening. Farmer John leads all of the goats out to the pasture, and people get to stand along the fence and watch the goats grazing. It's amazing. It's very picturesque. We're going to share some photos with everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Brent Ridge and Josh Kilmer-Fussell. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Susan. You. Good to see you.